He was a drifter, moving from town to town, robbing a gas station here, a grocery store there, until one night. She was coming home from choir practice, but she never got there. Stoff took her purse and ran away. He spent, Stoff had to run and hide. He sunk even lower. He had nothing. No life, no possessions, no dreams. And that's when the vision came. A doll. And in his dream, Stoff reached out. It was a gift. Stoff carved the doll, whittling the haunting face until it was an exact replica. And when he was done, Stoff went to town, to a bar. The owner had a daughter. Ooh, he said his girl would love the strange doll. And Stoff offered it to the man. And the owner, in turn, offered Stoff food and a place to stay. A simple transaction. The first of many. Stoff created the puzzle, just as he saw it, and everyone wanted one. Stoff opened up a shop, because everyone wanted a Stoff toy. Every boy and girl in the town, from all the neighboring towns. A Stoff toy is a toy for life, people said, and no two are alike. Everyone loved his unique toys. Henry Stoff grew wealthy. But then the strange virus came, and some of the children started dying. <coughs> dying, clutching their stock toys so close. And there was this one last vision. A last dream of a great house, a mansion that the wealthy toy maker was to build. A strange house, a house that scared people. My, isn't this a cheery place? I'm not sure we should have been here today. Why? Because it's a spooky old house? <laughs> Don't worry, dear. I'll watch out for you. Oh! What a dump! I expected more of Mr. Stump. Lord, it smells awful, too. What's Stoff been doing here? 